hello all welcome to another video of components 101 in this video i'll show you how you can use the most popular cd4015 shift register ic so cd4015 is a 4-bit shift register it's a dual 4-bit shift register that is you can control 4 bits on the output side using a serial data it's also called a serial in parallel out register so since it's a dual register it will have for two such arrangements inside the IC so this is one such arrangement one register will have four outputs one uh, data pin one clock pin and one reset pin let's take a look out a uh, look at the pinout of this uh, IC so here we have the pinout as you can see the blue colored ones which is the clock a data a reset a and the four digital outputs or the shift register a and the green color ones also have the same thing it also has four uh, output pins with one reset pin one data pin and a clock pin now if you come down and take a look at this image you will get a clear idea so basically it has two four stage shift registers inside a single package and each shift register has four digital outputs which can be controlled with serial data which can be provided to pin 7 here or pin 15 here and of course it will have a clock pin and a reset pin each for uh, each for both the shift register packages so now let's get into the simulation part and understand how the ic actually works so here we have one such shift register now the concept here is that when we are using microcontrollers we can use a shift register to expand the io limit of a microcontroller say for example if i connect a microcontroller to this ic i will only utilize the data pin and the clock pin and using this i can control four outputs it is commonly used to control leds drive lcds and stuff like that another popular ic which we have covered uh, similar to this one will be the 74hc595 which is a 8-bit shift register so we have already covered how this ic works but just to show you the simulation as you can see this is typically how the ic will be used with the microcontroller you can also use it with digital ic's with your own clock signal and data pin data inputs but it is commonly used with the microcontroller so as you can see this is an 8-bit shift register meaning you will have eight outputs which you can control on the other side based on the clock input you give here now let's go back to our ic the cd4015 so here the concept is that the reset pin should always be held zero for the IC to work. If you make it high, the IC will be in reset mode and nothing will be happening on the output side. And the clock pin, as the name says, you will be giving a clock signal. We will look at it shortly. And the data input is where all the magic happens. So for every clock input, if you make one bit high, over here we will have one such output going high if you make two bits high you will have two such outputs going high so for whichever clock input during the rise time if you make the data input also high then that particular output pin will also get high and it will get shifted for every corresponding clock pulse it might sound a bit confusing but i will explain it with a simulation now but before that i will also also show you this diagram so as you can see this is the clock signal which has a constant uh, up time and down time and during every rise time it will check for the data pin so during every rise time for the first rise time the data pin is also high so it will consider it as one and the on the output side the first output will go high and for the corresponding signals it will also consider whichever signal is high and that particular pin will go high and after that it will get shifted to every output so let's try to understand this with a simulation here so here we have the clock input and the data input to see how the pulse is actually getting into the ic we'll use an oscilloscope let me connect it so one to the clock input pin and the other to the data input pin now let's run the simulation let me reduce the time frame so here oh, okay here uh, i think i have to run it again let's run the simulation again close this thing so 
stop it okay before that i'll show you the settings in the clock input thing you can see that it's nothing it's just a, a clock input that i'm giving with a period of one second of course you can set higher frequencies on the ic's but let it be with a period of one second for now for understanding purpose and on the data pin i'm making two pulses high so the number of edges that i need is four which obviously means one uh, input one complete clock pulse will have two edges so four edges will make two clock pulses so i'm continuously incrementing two let us make it two so that we'll get only one clock pulse and we'll get only one output on the side so to understand it let's run the simulation and pause it right here so as you can see the yellow thing is the clock pulse which is a continuous pulse and the blue thing is the data pulse so the blue waveform goes high only once for the clock signal and then it goes down so due to that only one pin will go high and it will get shifted for every corresponding clock pulses so right now first clock pulse is done second clock pulse is done and it's on the third clock pulse and hence the third output is high if i go and resume with the simulation you can see the fourth goes high and then the data goes out because the blue waveform is down again so let's close it and run the simulation again and this time you can see we have one clock input and because of that we had only one output going high on the output side and it got shifted for every corresponding clock pulses now with for instead of one we'll make the clock pulse two by getting into this thing and the number of clock edges will be four so now we should see two outputs going high and then it will be shifted uh, to the next two pins corresponding to the clock input pulse. So let's run the simulation and as you can see in the waveform, we have on the blue waveform, you have two pins going high for the corresponding clock inputs. So hence we have two pins going high and it got shifted since we are on the third clock pulse, it got shifted to the pins two and three. So if you resume with the simulation, you can see that these two pins get shifted for every next clock pulse just getting shifted and then it goes out of the screen so similarly we can try for three instead of four we make it six and we get three such clock pulses and three pins will go high so here we go so you can see three pulses on the blue waveform corresponding to the clock pulse and hence we have three outputs and resume with the simulation and it gets shifted to the next pin for every corresponding clock pulse same way you can also do it for all the four by making it eight and boom so i think this would give a clear idea of how this ic works so let me do that again so here the simulation is restricted uh, to a to in a way that i can't make one pin zero for example this output can be considered as one 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 because even another one okay one 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 because there are no zeros in between i'm making it high continuously but if you're using a microcontroller you can make it up here like one zero zero one or in any any data pattern which you wish to get the output in that particular order so now let's go back to the word file and as you can see here i am generating a data 1011 which would not be possible with the simulation file but i think you get the picture of how the ic work so that's it guys thanks for watching